Hello, welcome to Impressive Physics video. My name is Bas Yuka. Today's topic is on phase changes. I want to start by saying that matter exists in three states or phases, namely solids, liquids, and gaseous phase. Matter can be transmitted from one phase to another. This can only happen when heat is added or removed from it. The transmission of matter from one phase to another is simply referred to as phase change. This is shown on the screen. As you can see on the screen, the line that runs from A to E represents addition of heat with time. So the point A represents the warming ice and point B represents melting point and point C represents warming liquid point D represents boiling point and point E represents the steam point let us go back to point A where we have the warming ice. At that point, the ice is heated and heat is being absorbed. So when heat is being absorbed, it will get to a point where there is a constant temperature. That is the melting point. So at that melting point, which is B, you will see on the graph a horizontal line at zero degrees Celsius. So this means that the temperature is constant at this point. And this temperature remains constant until all the ice is melted to water, which is in the liquid state. It requires about 334 kilojoules per kilogram for the ice to totally melt into water. What I mean is that the latent heat of fusion required is 334 kilojoules per kilogram or 334,000 joules per kilogram of energy. So the kilo there represents 1,000. Take note of that. When you go beyond point B, which is the melting point, you get to point C, where you have the liquid warms or li warming liquid. At point C, it simply means that all the ice has been converted to water. And at this point now, when heat is applied to the liquid continuously, temperature increases. So the temperature increases until it reaches the boiling point at point D. So when you go beyond the warming liquid at C, you get to D, where D is the boiling point. So at the boiling point, the temperature remains constant until all the liquid is totally converted to steam or vapor. It requires about 2260 kJ per kilogram of energy for the liquid to totally transform to vapor. That's what I'm trying to say is that the heat of vaporization is 2260 kJ per kilogram. Take note, that kilo represents 1,000. When you go beyond the boiling point, you get to the steam point at E. At the steam point, the liquid, call it water, is totally transformed to vapor. Let us go back to point B. At point B, we can see that even at the application of heat, 
the temperature of B still remains constant. We want to talk about latent heat of fusion. Latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat required to change the phase or the state of a unit mass of a solid to liquid state. It occurs at a constant temperature. At point D, latent heat of vaporization occurs. So the latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat required to change the phase of a unit mass of liquid to gaseous state at a constant temperature. Okay, let's look at the second graph. We can see that the second graph is a direct reverse of the first graph. We can see the point E, steam point. The next point there is condensation point. The next point there is point C, where you have the removal of heat. We have point B, the freezing point, and point A, the solidification point. Let us go back to point E. In the same vein, when heat is removed from vapor, we have a reverse of the phase graph. So now we are going to look at the steam point. At this point, when heat is removed from vapor, condensation occurs. This will now take us to the next point, the point D, where you have the condensation point. What is condensation? It is simply a process through which a substance transforms from gaseous state to liquid state. Now, when a substance transforms from, from gaseous state to liquid state, its energy is removed from the substance. Beyond point D is point C, representing the removal of heat from the liquid, let's say water. Just after point C is point B where you have the freezing point. This is a point whereby the liquid changes from liquid to solid state. And after point B, we have the solidification point, which is point A. At this point, all the liquid is being converted to solid state. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed our video. Please encourage us by pressing the like and share button. Also do not hesitate to press the subscribe button. Thank you as we hope to see you next time on our channel. Goodbye.